Welcome guys. In this course, I want to quickly show you how to build projects with JavaScript. And in this case, I'm going to show you some of the things most tutorials don't always show you step by step so that you will understand the working principle behind every project you want to build. In this case, we just want to build a slideshow and we are going to use JavaScript to build that. There are some fundamental principles I will not explain here because they are meant for the main course but i will still give you some information you need to understand what you need to understand here so let's get started anytime you want to build a project the first thing you have to think about is where is your data coming from is it coming from an external api that is another website or is it coming from an internal api that is it is coming from within your code base or is it coming from your users that means in that case it will come through a form in this case we just want to focus on our code base we want the data to come from the code base that means we will create those things ourselves so let's create the data we are going to use and in this case the data we are going to use is going to be a collection of images and we will be sliding them one by one repeatedly so that is what we are going to do here as i have shown you in the demo the first thing we have to do is to create an image storage where we will keep all the images or the path to the images we want to use in the slide show so let's create that const images and we set it to an array we have to put the images in it one after another the first image is this images and the first image we have included the first one let's put the second one and this is the second one let's put another one so images slash the third one okay let's pick the fourth one images slash the fourth one Oh, that spelling is not correct, but don't mind. You don't need that. What we need is to make it work. So at least for now, so you can edit that later. So images and the last one is for cardinal point. We have all our images ready. All the images we want to be displaying in the slideshow are available. The next thing we have to think of is how are we going to display the images? Before that, let's quickly have another temporary storage and uh, we just say let current slide equals to zero let me quickly explain something an array is when you are talking about anything that has an order that thing is an array for instance a key at a bank is an array because there will be the first person, the second person, the third person, and so on and so on. In this case, this is an array because we have the first image, second image, third image, fifth image. So the current slide is referring to the first image that will be displayed to the user. We set it to zero. Current slide is equals to zero. What is the meaning of that zero? Are you joking? No, I am not joking. This is what it means. In an array, we have zero index and that zero index stands for the first item. So the image first image here stands for the first thing and its index is zero. The current slide reverts to first image. That is what we mean by the current slide. And the index of the second image here is one, that of the third one is two that of this one is three and that of this one is four so we know our current slide and we are going to pick it when we need it the next thing we want to do now is to create this slide that will actually carry out what we want how are you going to do that all you have to do is just keep watching i'll show you in a very simple manner let's just do const slide equals you know i don't want to put any parameter here so i just want to quickly write a function that get the job done no without delete 
There's no time for delay, so let's continue. What we want to do now is to interact with the browser, that is, the DOM. When I said the DOM, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the HTML tags. So these are the HTML tags, and I want to interact with the image in this slider, right? This one I'm hovering on, and I will be putting the path to each image one by one to this SRC attribute to display the image as a slide. How am I going to do that? Am I going to use something magical? No, I'm going to use JavaScript, not something spectacular. What we have to do is const slide image and let's access that image from the browser. We just do documents dot get element by id what the hell is that okay i will tell you let me just finish this one id slide uh, image the meaning of this is that image tag has an identity which is this one slider image so we are now calling it with that id slider image that means we grab that image tag so that we can work on it. Let's see whether we have grabbed it. All we have to do is to do console.log slide image. So that's it. And let's go to the browser and let's see what happened. Bam. Control Shift J in your Chrome browser to see the console. And if you are in Mozilla Firefox, you can just do Control Shift K instead. But nothing is happening. What the hell is happening here? Oh, let me tell you what is happening. There is a mistake we have made right here. So let me show you. Anytime you write a function, you have to call it first before something happens. If you don't do that, nothing will happen. That is why nothing is showing on the screen. Let me quickly call it and see how the magic will happen without any stress. Let's just do that. Slide. Slide. Wow. So. We've done that. Let's go back to the browser and see what happens. Boom. Can you see the HTML tag here? Do you see that? IMG SRC ID slider. <laughs> Wahoo! You see that? It's not working. That means we have grabbed it and we can manipulate any how we want it. Let me just show you how it is, what it is. So what I want to do with it now is to now set the src attribute of that tag i have just grabbed one by one with the path of these images we have here and the current slide so let's just do this just do slide image equals images we now say current slide what does that mean okay what it means is this you know that we say current slide, right? And by putting current slide in, the, in this, we are selecting an image with index 0 because current slide is equal to 0 and 0 will be passed here and that means we are selecting an image with index 0. So, which one are you going to pick like that? <laughs> you don't have to ask that question. Okay, that is no stupid question because there is a sense in nonsense okay the first one will be picked this one as index zero so i have some tutorials about uh array so you can check them out i'll put the link so that you can check them out for proper understanding anyway you don't have to worry you will learn everything properly in the course we have picked the first image right here and we have set it as the attribute of this slide image oh what the hell is that I forgot to access that src and that will not work. Let's just do dot src. We have accessed the src of that image. If we go to the browser now, we can see that image should be displayed, but it may not be displayed. This is programming. Okay. Wow, it works. So let's continue. You know, we have displayed the first image, right? The next thing we want to do is to slide it. We want it to be going from the beginning to the end, back to the beginning again. That is what is called a slideshow, and that is what we want to build. 
let us continue. So how do we do that? If you ask me, who am I going to ask? Let's keep doing it together and see what happens. We are going to use a conditional statement here. But well, before we do that, I remember something. I should have done that before, but I used 2MB brain. That's why I forgot to do that. So let me quickly do it. Let me put it right here. Const time equals to 2000 and 2000 milliseconds is equals to 2 seconds because a second is equals to 1000 milliseconds. So 2000 milliseconds is equals to 2 seconds. That means we want to be changing our slide every 2 seconds. Now, before we continue, we also want to pick the last slide. This one is the first slide. 0 refers to the first slide, right? And we have to know the last slide. That is, the last image among this image. The last one should be the last slide. So, let's just create an indicator of the last slide. We just say const last slide equals to how can we know the last item in an array in javascript this is how we do it we always do images dot length minus one why do we have to add minus one normally array start from zero counting of this thing will be five but if you check image dot length it will return five but if we start counting from zero, this should be four, right? So in operation, we need four because we start counting from zero. But if we check the length of the array, it will give us five. That is why we have to sub subtract one from it to get the last item because the index of this item here is four. So if we want to get that index, we have to subtract one from the length of the image the length of the image will be five so by subtracting one from it it will give us four like that we can access the last item we have done that and let's quickly just use it here so all we have to do now is check whether the slide has reached the end or has reached the last image and if it has reached the last image what we do is we will set it back to zero so that it will start from the first image again but if it is not at the end we'll keep increasing it we'll keep taking it to the next image until it gets to the end so this is how we do that we just do current slide less than last last slide if the current slide is less than the last slide what we do is we add one to the current slide what is the meaning of adding one to the current slide it means that if that function executes another time current slide would have been one so it will take the next image by that time that is why we are doing that so we will just say current slide plus one so or current slide plus plus you can do it that way too you can use any of the two but it seems this one might be very straightforward for you so don't worry even if you are confused with anything because i explain all of them properly in the actual course this is just an introduction and i want you to get the feel of it that is why i'm showing you all this so we have done that and the next thing we have to do right now is if the current slide is less than the last slide keep increasing it that's what we want if this condition is not met again what we are going to do is to set the current slide back to zero so that our slide will start from the beginning again if we save this and check this you know it's still working so it's working all we have to do now is to make sure that we are sliding it how do we now do that? Because we are calling it once and it will pick just one image. That is why we have the only one image here. How can we make it to be sliding? Let's do it now. What we want to do now is to use a set timeout, set timeout function, and we call slide, right? 
which is a function, we call it, and we set the time. You know, we have written the time already, the time out, we have written it. So, we want to be calling this function every two seconds. That's what we are doing. We want to be calling the function every two seconds. That's it. And that will not work because we have to trigger that. We have to trigger that to work. And if we don't do that, it may not work properly. Before it worked, I had to write slide, right? So it works then, but we don't need that. You can see it's not working, it's not sliding. So what we have to do now is to just do window window dot unload equals to slide so what we do now is that once the window is loaded what do we mean by the window what we mean by the window is this page this page we open here so it reverts to the window once it is open this tab and everything that are connected to it once they are open the function will be called so we have done that let's check again is it working current slide is not defined so that's the issue so we just have to fix it current slide there's an error in what on what line 51 current slide is not defined current oh sorry n is here current slide is not defined so see, can you see that yes we have done it so everything is sliding now it is working and that is how to go about programming but there are something more there are a lot of things that i didn't explain as i was teaching you and most tutorials you see on the internet they didn't explain those things and those things are the fundamental behind building any project that has to do with movement so before i end this mini introduction let me quickly show you the basic thing but i will not show you everything because you will learn the thing in the course you will learn all the secret and all the project fundamental in the course but let me just introduce you so that you will understand what i mean if you really understand that it will help you to think through code and know how to work on your own another time but they don't always show you that let me quickly show you Anything movement has to do with this thing for cardinal point and we also have this thing in an array I told you that the index of an array start from zero, right? And it moves to one two three four five Okay, it's like our array. You can move anything from left to right. For instance, if I want to create maybe Previews, let's look at this cyclist. If I want to move him to the front, I'll just say 4 minus 1 that is the previous right it will be moved to this point if i want to move him to 5 i'll just say 4 plus 1 and that is the idea behind anything movement even if this up down uh right left if you want to create those things those are the basic principle behind them let me explain how this function works the slide function because there is something very technical about it and it's not meant for a beginner but I'm just introducing you. You will learn how to do everything in the course. But I still have to explain so that you know what you are doing or what we have done. From here, we get the element, the image tag, and we reset it SRC attribute to the first image in this images array. In this images array. And that is what we did here and it will display just that as we have seen before and now we are checking whether our slide has reached the end if the current slide is not the last slide that means we still have some slide to check right that is why we are adding one to the current slide and by adding one to it the next time the function is called it will show the next image 
But by the time it gets to the last slide, it will no longer be less than the last slide. In that case, we will set our current slide to zero. What does that mean? It means we are starting from the beginning again. So the sliding will start from the first image again. And what is the function of this set time out? It is the one that is calling the function, this slide function, every two seconds. So by putting this slide function here, we tell this set time out to be calling this slide function every two seconds. But if you look at something, you will realize that we are calling this function from within itself. What does that mean? How can you call a function from within itself? Wow. Does that make sense? Yes. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense because that is what is called recursion in programming. When a function calls itself, right? That is called recursion. And how does that work? It means that by the time the function executes to this point, it will call last slide again. This function has been running from here to here to here. This set timeout will call the slide function again. That means it will start from here again. It will come back, come back here, do everything here again. By the time it gets here, it will still call itself again. It will go back to the beginning and start coming back to here, here, here again. By the time it gets here again, it will still be called by this one, right? And it will go back to the beginning. You can see that it helps us to keep repeating the same process by calling itself. That is what we achieve with recursion and that is what we always use recursion to do, to repeat itself. So we are repeating the same process from time to time. Once again, it starts from here, here, move here, move here, move here. Then it calls itself again. Then it will start from here again. Come back here, come back here, come back here, come back here. It calls itself again. It goes to the beginning again. And so on, and so on, and so forth. That is how we achieve how the slider is going, 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 and coming back, starting from the beginning again. That is how we achieve it, and it's as straightforward as that. Whether you still don't understand some things because maybe you are a total beginner, that is not a problem because this course is meant to help you learn that and you can't expect everything to be explained in the demo. So all you have to do is to make sure you get this course and learn everything in details. You will learn all the fundamentals you need to build projects, like how to think about projects, how to conduct your research so that you can be programming on your own, and how to go about converting your skills to cash and making money from it. So you will learn everything, so don't bother yourself. This is just an introduction to let you feel what you are going to be dealing with in the course. By now, what you'll say is, thank you. I know you appreciate this. See you in the course. I'm expecting you. Bye for now. Boom, boom, boom. See you.